What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one will break down what's going on with Tesla stock and what you should be watching for moving forward. I'm also going to talk about SPY and the QQQ and a couple of tickers out there. Break down what the news is saying about Tesla, what's going on with the technicals, and why next week is going to be absolutely massive for the stock market. But before I break anything down about all of this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. We sign up for Weeble, the link down below, and deposit any amount of money into the account. You are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends in just about 11 days, so check it out before they run out. With that said, let's get on with the video. Tesla was down 1.1% for the day, dropping another 1% in the after hours, looking relatively weak. However, we did get a very, very nice bounce to play uh, in the morning. We actually called this out and we saw Tesla just, you know, get a very, very nice move. So after Tesla got this nice bounce, this was a very good trade that could have been made right over here, especially in the back test of this like 260 area. Besides that, after the big move was made, Tesla ended up slowing down and reversing and continue, continuing to downtrend after that. And as a result of that, Tesla closed kind of red. Now, going into the week, I want to remind you guys that SPY is still looking relatively weak. It's not very strong, especially because Apple is continuing to downtrend. And the same thing can be said about the entire tech sector right now. However, whether or not tech could get a bounce is going to be heavily determined by the massive catalysts coming out for next week. And those are going to be uh, both the tech earnings and also the FOMC meeting all happening next week. So let's break this down. In the very beginning, on Monday, we have Domino's Pizza and just a couple of others. We have some banks alongside a couple of tech stocks. We have Logitech and just a few others for Monday. For Tuesday, however, we have Verizon, we have GM, we have GE, Spotify, and just a few others before the market opens. Then we have Microsoft and Alphabet and Snap. These two are going to be the two big ones on top. I can't wait for both Microsoft and Alphabet slash Google. But the thing about it is, in my opinion, uh, I think Microsoft has a good chance of giving us some decent earnings after some very big news that came out involving like their AI developments uh, and their investments as well. However, I'm not as confident about Google, Apple, Meta, and a couple of others coming out later on for the next like two weeks, uh, especially Amazon as well. I'm not as confident about those, so we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. For Wednesday, we have AT&T, we have Coca-Cola, we have Hilton, Union Pacific, and just a few others. And then for Wednesday, after the market closes, we have Meta, Chipotle, and then we have eBay all coming out. What else is going to be so big about Wednesday is going to be the FOMC meeting. It's going to be happening on Wednesday intraday at about, this is going to be at about 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So my time right here is in Pacific time because I'm in a different part of the world. But it's worth noting, Jerome Powell is going to be back in action and speaking on Wednesday. The Fed is going to make their big rate hike decision simultaneously if they raise rates even more. Uh, this could lead to more volatility in the stock market, but the market is expecting this since there is almost a 100% chance they're going to be raising rates again. Uh, the market looks like it's ready for it, so we'll see how the market reacts to this. But this alone may not be the biggest catalyst. I would say big tech is going to be even more impactful. Uh, but when it comes to what the Fed is doing, the Fed has been looking at the unemployment data, and that's incentivizing them to continue to raise rates because they want there to be a reset. And uh, there could be other reasons behind their their actions in doing so. Uh, could it be that they want to stop inflation to come up because they want to slow down aggregate demand? That's a possibility. Could it be that they know that inflation may go up in the summer, possibly? That's another possibility. But based on the data currently, inflation is clearly going down on a very strong downtrend, looking at both CPI and core CPI. But core CPI's downtrend is not as strong. So the Fed could be like kind of concerned about that. And they also want a big reset in the job sector. That's very clear to me. That's what they want. And because they want that, that's part of the reason why they're going to remain uh, quite hawkish and they may raise rates even more. However, despite them doing this, I don't consider this the end of the world or anything that horrible because it's only a 25 basis point rate hike that's priced in. Uh, it's very likely. And if that's the case, it could lead to more volatility, especially when Powell speaks. So just be ready for that. And then once again, for Wednesday, we have like Meta and all these other earnings coming out. Meta is going to be the big one for Wednesday. For Thursday, don't forget McDonald's, uh, just a couple of others before the market opens. And then after the market closes on Thursday, we have Intel, Ford, and Roku. 
Those are also going to cause some volatility for the markets. Followed by Friday before the market opens, we have Exxon Mobil, PNG, Chevron, and just a couple of others. So very crazy earnings week. This is going to be the, one of the biggest weeks of the quarter. Make sure you are ready for this. We also have the FOMC meeting. And then the week after this, we also have like Apple and Amazon coming out, I believe. So lots of big earnings are coming out. As far as Tesla goes, I'm just going to briefly talk about the only major piece of news I saw. They're still talking about the seatbelts recall. I don't consider this major horrible news for Tesla because it's only 16,000 models. It's actually relatively small compared to other recalls other companies have gone through. The NHTSA came out basically and they're arguing that seatbelts have a big issue, I believe, uh, in a certain part and they could detach quite easily. But for the Model S and X specifically, this is why... Uh, this led to more downside for Tesla. Now, this news came out, I believe, like yesterday, but this is still making lots of headlines to this day. Even right now, it's still making lots of headlines. So I just want to note this. Uh, is this a bad piece of news? Yes, it is serious. Tesla has to deal with this issue, of course, but it's not so huge compared to like a 100,000 car recall, right? There's a big difference there. Now, as far as Tesla goes, it tends to do a little bit better on Mondays compared to like other days of the week. And we did see a slight increase in the short interest as of uh, about two days ago. We saw about 41 million Tesla shares shorted. Uh, overall, a slight increase. And we may see this actually spike up by the time the data comes out for Thursday and Friday. Uh, I believe there's more shorting going on with Tesla. We saw some shorts cover at least to some degree when they were repositioning. And we saw some whales trying to buy in around the 255 level. However, like I said before, I mean, I'm not saying that Tesla has to just start to squeeze or continue running because of it. Uh, we're going to be watching some very critical levels for it. Tesla also had high volume. It sold on high volume in the very beginning of the day, but volume maintained a pretty decent uh, amount as time went on as Tesla tried to bounce. So now let's break this down. How is this looking on the technical side? For Tesla, this is very simple, basically. If you want to turn bullish, you want to see this thing break above uh, this 268 resistance. Break that, we're going to be watching 270. It could push the 270s if we get a clean break above that resistance. But so far, it fails to break 268 and it got rejected. If Tesla continues to drop, you're going to be watching 255. If that fails us, 250 is going to be the next major level. Uh, if it breaks below 250, guys, that's going to be a bad sign because there's not a whole lot of support holding it up above 250. That's one of the issues I see with it. Uh, if you just look at this like this, a break below 250 right here, the zone at 250. There's a little support at 247, but the support is just not that strong. Uh, some support at 244.45, uh, 242 as well. I mean, there's some ma minor levels, but nothing as significant until we get to like 240. This is where support becomes stronger. And this is where we, we're going to likely see a lot of buyers step in. So if it breaks 250, it could downtrend quite a bit more. If it breaks 255, it's going to test 250. And we're, we're going to be just watching this very carefully. Now, why else is the whole market looking weak? Because it's not just Tesla. We can't just throw hands at Tesla. The whole market is slowing down. If you look at SPY, I predicted in my video from yesterday, we'd see this thing gap up and maybe see some downside. But then intraday, I talked about how the market got this nice balance. It was trying to hold up, but ultimately it ended up failing. And I went over both the possibilities, both the upside and downside possibilities. And ultimately, the downside possibility ended up playing out. So after we did see this move, we have this dist distributive looking structure right here that could lead to more downside. And one issue I do see for a lot of the bulls would be the fact that we have this like inverse cup and handle that's developing now. This is, this is looking like a cup and a handle, and we could see downside to this like imbalance area around this 450 area. So it is looking more bearish. A confirmation of the bearish trend would be a break below the 200 EMA on the 30 minute time frame below uh, 451.47 to about 451.5, like around that area, we're going to likely see more downside if it breaks below that to get to about 450. And if that fails us, there could be even more downside as well. So it's looking relatively weak, not the strongest, in my opinion, approaching earnings, but there is hope for the market to balance if we get some very bullish news from earnings. So we're, we're going to be watching that very carefully. Now for the NASDAQ or the QQQ, we're going to talk about the QQQ now. This is also looking relatively weak. Uh, I told you guys two things. I told you this thing might gap up yesterday. Uh, I said it might gap up today and then end up dropping down. And that's what we kind of got. But then it got this nice bounce. It was trying to get a nice push to the upside. But this was a very good shorting opportunity and failed to do so before getting an end of the day sell off. Now, tech is looking weaker as we're seeing the markets rotate. And we saw some weakness in tech because of earnings as well. You can't forget about that. 
uh, the overall projections for earnings and the expectations are now like leading investors to becoming apprehensive as we approach big tech earnings. And those are going to dictate if the market gets a bounce or not. However, I am leaning more bearish looking at the current trend. We have like a head and shoulders like pattern. And simultaneously, I'm eyeing this gap down here at 373. But one of the things I told you is that if we held above this low from yesterday. So, so we had the support right here. We held it temporarily. There was a chance the market could have tried to hold up. But if we broke it, if we broke the low, the market would likely see downside. We broke the low at the very end of the day. So that's another sign of weakness after making a new low of the day during the final 10 minutes. I'm sorry, final hour of the day. So in essence, this is looking more bearish to me. I'm going to be looking for maybe another gap up in, on Monday, then potentially more downside after that. And it's going to likely lead this thing to come all the way down to that gap fill area at 373, if not lower, depending on the big tech earnings. So that's going to be very impactful. Make sure you're ready for that. Another thing that's a little weak for the markets is Apple stock. Looking at Apple, this thing had a very important support right here. It was basically like very stationary. So if I look at the chart like this, for example, Look at how, look at how this thing was just going back and forth and back and forth, like right here for the last week. It was at, at like 192, going up to 195, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it was basically very stationary, right? And we established a very dominant and very important support at this 192.5 area. And what happened today? For the first time in many days, we actually broke below 192.5 and we ended up testing 192 as the next support. Then 192 itself failed us and the next important support is going to be around 191. Break below that, then we have 190 potentially coming, then 188.5, 188.75 to 188.5 around there afterwards. So it broke the low, it broke the major support and it's looking very, very weak. That's not good for the markets because Apple has a big weight in the market. It's a very, very powerful stock. Make sure you are ready for this. Now, there's a little hope for the market temporarily, and that is going to be, in my opinion, Microsoft's earnings. I think I'm leaning a little bit more in favor of Microsoft doing relatively well, but I'm not too confident about Google uh, and any of the other big tech stocks. But uh, maybe this can help the market temporarily. But besides that, uh, if we get bad earnings from like Meta, Intel, and the list goes on, if they're very mixed, and it, it's not just that, it's also about like, guidance, things could continue to slow down a bit. And that's completely normal during this time of year. The market was due for a pullback anyways, and it's finally coming. So I just want to note that as the market slows down, right, this is having a very collective effect on many other stocks. You could see NVIDIA is also dropping more. It could see more downside now in retest like 440 if it breaks 442. But like I said in my previous videos, I'm not worried whatsoever about NVIDIA. I see this thing bouncing sometime in August, approaching its earnings. I'm still very excited for it, and I'm going to be looking for buying opportunities moving forward. Uh, just be careful with the premiums. They are very expensive right now, and just know that it is a little risky as of right now as we have big events coming, which could drag the whole market down, which would slow NVIDIA down as well. And if that's the case, it is what it is, but just know that there's a good potential for it as it approaches its earnings. Uh, we're going to be watching the 440 support if that fails us, and there's like the 435 area. Uh, if anything, those are worth noting. Uh, Microsoft had this wedge. I'm going to check if this actually held. Uh, it had this channel right over here, and you can see it's still trying to hold in it. We will see if we can try to get a bullish break next week approaching earnings or not. We'll just have to wait and see, but this is what Microsoft is looking like for now. And besides that, Meta is looking especially weak. It actually, I was leaning more bearish on Meta. I thought this thing would actually test like 300 to 298 around there. It actually went all the way down to 291, so even lower than expected. But I was leaning more bearish on it, and that did end up playing out. Next major support below 290 is going to be 287.5, and potentially 285 if those continue to break. For resistance, you're going to be watching 297. Point, uh, 297.3 around there, this imbalance around 298, then the 300 level and 305, some other important levels. But I do want to know it's looking kind of weak. The dollar is still holding up, but it's not really breaking out that hard. But one thing worth noting about the dollar index is this. I don't know if it's still showing on my chart. There is this imbalance up here. I think I'm going to go on the four hour time frame and show you this. The dollar has this imbalance right here around the 101 point something, 101 points, let's see. 101.5 area. If the dollar keeps going, if it keeps pumping to the upside, 
that's going to be bearish for the markets. The dollar is gaining some strength now, it's starting to show signs of this accumulation playing out, it's starting to push to the upside. There's some balances up here, which is going to be acting as a vacuum to suck it into this level. That's going to be bearish for the markets and starting to develop as well. The VIX is also, you know, kind of red as it's very manipulated, but what's worth noting is. It's been forming a bullish divergence and starting to make higher lows technically. Even though it's very slow, it is starting to do that. And it might start to uptrend a little bit because of the market slowing down. The market didn't really crash or do anything like that. I'm not really counting on a crash in the markets. I'm just talking about a very healthy pullback, the market dropping a few percentage points. That's all I'm seeing. I'm not counting on a, a massive crash or anything like that. But I do want to note that this is really possible because of the current sector. Uh, the current sector is basically changing, losing momentum, and getting a very healthy pullback. So please be prepared for more potential downside, even for Tesla, unfortunately. And we're going to be watching the levels on it to see how it performs and just be very patient. I will talk more about this tomorrow. I'm also going to talk about the NASDAQ 100 rotation. I've been requested to make a video about this, the, the rebalancing. Sorry about that. The rebalancing that's happening to it. I'm going to make it very clear, very understandable. It's not anything too complicated. So don't worry about it. And until my next video, thank you all for listening. Have an absolutely spectacular rest of the day. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla in the market to the moon, despite the fact that the market is looking bearish. I'm still very bullish for the long term and peace out.